Everybody, hey, Toby Salgado here. So glad you showed up to our Google Hangout. You know, look, you've heard it on the show. Uh, we're doing this every third Thursday, and it's an opportunity for everybody in the audience to kind of interact. Uh, let me hit record so I can record this. Thing. Uh, so we can, you know, we can interact, you know, because normally on my show, right? And if you don't know, if you're new to this, what we do, I'm the host of a show called Super Agents Live, and what we do on that show is I talk to the most influential voices in real estate. I talk to the top producing coaches, authors, and trainers. That's what we do. And the idea for this show, and similar to this Google Hangout, is everybody right, wants to kill it. How do you do it? How do you do that in real estate? You know, and real estate is broken, right? That's why I did this show. Real estate is broken because if you want to succeed, it's, it's really like it's stuck in the 70s, right? You go buy a book, you hire a coach, or go to a seminar. I wanted to change it. I wanted to take, I want to follow Napoleon Hill's path and talk with the people who are doing it. So that's what we do in the show. Today, we're doing this Google Hangout so that again, because I know, oh look, I get about 400 emails every day. People ask me questions. Now I try to, I try to answer them as much as I can. I don't always get to it. So this show, every third Thursday of the month, uh, I bring on somebody that I've had on my show and we pick a topic. And, and, and it's, again, it's an opportunity for you guys to ask us questions. Now today, what, what we're gonna go over is lead generation. We're gonna talk about the sales funnel, right? Everybody, this is something that, that, that confounds most people, right? Uh, we're gonna talk about the number of different lead generation channels you should have. We're gonna talk about the funnel, lead generation, uh, custom development, prospecting. And by the way, those two terms, prospecting and lead generation, people think they're synonymous, they're the same, they're not. So we're going to talk about where they fit in the funnel, all the way down to follow up, and what kicks out is cash. Who I have with us today, my friend, a guy named Shadi Bazzi. Now, if you don't know who Shadi is, this guy is a big, there's lots of trainers. Everybody knows Mike Ferry. They know Tom Ferry. Some people know Bob Corcoran. Other people know Tim Harris. Guys like Shadi, who's on the show today, have been the masterminds, the, the energy, the juice, the motor behind lots of those organizations. He's come on the show, and we have him here today. Hey, Shadi, what's up? Hey, my main man, uh, Toby, excited to be here, excited uh, about making a difference today, and uh, sweated rock and roll. Awesome. And in a minute, Shadi, I want, I want you to tell everybody why they should listen to you. And before we get into the show, real quick, everybody, again, the podcast, Super Agents Live, you can go to our website, superagentslive.com. You can check everybody out, again, if you're not familiar with it. And, uh, and by the way, there's a free ebook, 32 page ebook that I wrote. It's called How to Sell. Uh, you should download it. So, Shadi, take a minute before we introduce our other panelists to, and tell everybody why they should listen to what you say today. Perfect. Uh, well, first of all, Toby, you know, for, for the people out there that don't know who I am, uh, you know, I've been doing, uh, you know, I sold real estate in two different completely marketplaces uh, first in the suburb of Detroit and then in Orange County, California. So been in the high end and been in the low end and everything in between. And over the course of the last, I'd say about 14, 15 years, I've been on approximately 20,000 uh, one-on-one coaching calls uh, with individuals from all over the, the USA, Canada, and, and part of Australia. And, uh, you know, I mean, we can throw a lot of names out there, but there's no need to, you know, throw names out there. Now, one of the things that I specialize in is helping anyone who is 100% committed to taking their business to the next level to double, triple, or even quadruple their business in the first 12 months. <coughs> the key word was 100% committed, and that's why we are very selective on who we work with. Now, why should someone listen today? Well, why should someone listen today? Simply because what I'm going to share with them are specific strategies, specific mind shifts, specific lead generation tools that anyone, anywhere can put in place if they choose to with very little dollar and in many cases for absolutely free and can, can generate business from it in the next seven days. So if you want at least one new transaction sometime in the next seven days, grab your pen, grab a paper, turn off Facebook, turn off all distractions and let's rock and roll and let's give you the tools. That is awesome. So look, yeah, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll be laying out the structure as I see it and then you can get into the specific tools. Yeah. The last person who we have, and we always have, is the guy that is the, the, the organizer behind this whole thing, Frank Klesitz of Viral Marketing. Hello everybody. I just posted a link up here in the showcase while I was writing, is a link to uh, Super Agents Live where you can check that out. I think I just made it live, so on the right hand side you'll see the showcase with a link to that. And whenever they mention a link here on the Hangout, I'll find it online and post it for you here on the right. And also on top of that, what's really cool is there's a cool Q&A app. 
So if you want to ask a question, just go ahead and submit a question, and it'll show up here on the right-hand side of the screen, and we have time to get to it, which I'm sure we'll, we'll, uh, we'll answer it. So I'm excited awesome. to uh, learn some cool stuff today. I'm glad you're here with us. Okay, so listen. So any business, all businesses, and especially real estate, everything is about lead generation, right? Nothing happens until somebody sells something. And you can't sell something unless you, you get a lead. Now, I want to, today, here's what I want to do. And I wrote a little diagram. I don't know if any of you guys can see this or not on my, on my screen, but, but, but I'll talk you through it. So basically, it, when you have a sales funnel, at the top of the sales funnel, it's marketing. So, so and what marketing is, and I'm, I'm going to go over this very quickly, and me and Shadi can break it down, but marketing at the high level is just simply brand awareness. People need to be aware of your brand. Not what you do and who you are, but just what your brand is. Once, once you get them aware of your brand, right, that is marketing, you can get into the top of the funnel. The top of the funnel is lead generation. Now, a lot of people get lead generation wrong because they think, oh, well, for a lead to be real, I need to have, uh, you know, I need to have a name, I need to have an email, I need to have a phone number. It's not true. You can have either, any one of those things. Lead generation is just simply leads. The next step in that funnel is prospecting, right? So you, so you get this giant group of leads, and and and, uh, and we'll in a, in a minute we'll talk about where what that what that marketing looks like high level and what those lead generation sources are. So you get marketing, lead generation to prospecting, and again those two things are not the same. Prospect, if you think of like a gold miner prospecting, right? You know he gets in the dirt, he digs, he digs, and he's looking for gold, and that's what you're doing with out of your lead, the, the big pile of lead generation you get. You need to prospect through that, and and what you're looking for when you're prospecting is people who have intent, right? That's what you're looking for. And, and you can, and intent can be a timeline intent, intent to buy or sell, whatever. Intent. And then you go through the customer development process, right? And again, we'll high level we'll talk through that. So, so just to get your minds sort of right and sort of aligned, if we think about marketing, what is that? And how does that differ from lead gen? And how does that differ from prospecting? So briefly, marketing, brand awareness, Right, so that is the that's direct mailers, that's your magnets, that's that's simple things like your website. That could be community events, right? Do you sponsor a local, uh, uh, you know, elementary school football team or whatever, right? Community events. Um, so so again, that those things will give you brand awareness, and then you get into the lead gen spot of that, right? So um, so how what? And here's something that people get wrong when you when people think when real estate agents or a business or whatever it is. People will focus on their sphere, or they'll focus on uh, maybe sponsoring an event, right? Those, those are different channels. If you want to be successful, and, I, and I'm sure Chatty will talk about this, but if you want to be successful, you need to have always at least five or six different lead generation audiences or channels, right? And, and, and when you have complete five or six completely separate channels, you have completely different audiences that don't overlap, and that is super important. We'll get to it in a minute. So, in terms of channels, if you're like, crap, I only have one channel, right? Maybe that's Google Pay Per Click, or maybe that's Facebook ads. Uh, I quickly wrote down uh, a few different lead gen channels. Now, and I know I'm talking fast, and so let me, I'll slow down a little bit. So here are lead gen channels. Sometimes a few of these categories that I'm going to say will land in multiple categories, meaning that something like a door knocking is both lead gen and prospecting. I, I don't want to start to make those fine differences yet, but here are some of the lead generation channels that you can think about implementing in your business, right? <clears throat> you, and a lot of these you know, Bill and Scobram. So door knocking, that's one lead gen channel. Cold culting, one lead gen channel. Uh, expires, that's a different channel. For sale by owners, Fizzbo's, different channel. Uh, a networking group, you should be part of a networking group. You can start your own mastermind group. Um, uh, you can go to meetups. Uh, you, uh, if you're not familiar with meetup.com, there's tons of meetups happening all over the place. And in those meetups, you know, you can go to a, a bike riding group, right? That's a whole different audience that, you know, you're riding bikes, you're having fun, you have volleyball, soccer, baseball, whatever it is. Those are all opportunities for you to meet people. And, and again, not prospect through there, but just, just as a lead generation channel. So uh, meetups, chamber of commerce, obviously, uh, sports group I mentioned earlier, you know, you can ride a bike with, with people. Toastmasters, conferences, if you have a kid in school, um, that is a fantastic lead generation channel. You know, my wife, for example, my wife at our local school, she teaches, she's the art docent, and she teaches a class there. Anyhow, community events. So those are lead generation channels. I, 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 I don't want to take too much time. We'll get into prospecting. We'll get into customer development in a minute. But So, so far, Shadi, 
tell, what, what are your thoughts on this, and how, how do you see the world differently or the same? Well, um, um, I'm definitely in, in alignment with, with your thinking, and I think uh, one of the things that we got to get our audience very clear on um, is what, what is really, a fun, like a lot of people, you say a funnel, and they really don't have an understanding of what a funnel is. Okay, so they just see this image of a funnel that goes like this. It's like, okay, starts here, you know, you do your marketing lead generation, but they don't really understand the remainder of the funnel, okay? So I, I think that, I mean, for people in the internet marketing industry or people that are running a business like, you know, you and I, we really understand that. And I'm saying this from experience because when I begin to have these conversations with my coaching clients and say, okay, well, you know, let's go ahead and put a funnel in place. They're like, what do you mean by a funnel, okay? Right. So I agree with you. There's a big difference between lead generation and, and a big difference between, uh, you know, going out there and prospecting. And, and, and so now the question is really, which one is more important? You know, some, somebody's got to be asking the question, which one is more important? Do I begin by, you know, building up my brand, the brand awareness, uh, you know, my marketing, my email, my, my, my logo, et cetera, or do I go out there and, and do the prospecting? So what is the difference between lead generation and the difference between prospecting? Do you want me to go over that or do you want to go yeah, over that? I, I do. You can go over that in a second. But, but you know, in, uh, you touch on something super, super important, right? Which one of those activities is more important? And, and here's how I see it. Like, again, I'll show you this. This. Uh, so, so you know, lead generation, prospecting, marketing, customer development, follow up, picks out cash, right? So, if you look at that funnel that's shaped like this, I I firmly believe that your time or importance, your time should be spent in proportion to that funnel. So, lead generation is the big, big top piece, and that's where you should spend. And it gets complicated, but really, you need to spend again proportionate amount of time with that funnel. Lead generation, prospecting, customer development. Because yeah. after, again, you know, as that you, you you as you move down the funnel, you get more and more intense, you get more and more close to the event, which is a, a sale or a purchase. But yeah, so go uh, go ahead. What uh, you know outline the difference in your mind between lead gen and prospecting customer development. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna say is that they are both just as important as one another. And you know, like you said earlier, you said, you know, Shaddy you know, we got to have five or six lead generation systems in place. And that's exactly what I coach my clients on is we got to really put six, I go with the number six, six lead generation systems in place. So what we want to do is we want to have a combination of passive versus active. Okay. And a lot of times when people hear the word passive, they're like, oh my God, passive marketing really doesn't work. Well, no, passive marketing really works because if you got a pay-per-click campaign, you're actively putting it together and then it becomes a, a, a very lucrative passive, you know, uh, lead source for yourself. So you got to have both in place. So the way I like to split it up with my clients is in the beginning, I like to go with like, you know, a, a 60-40. What I mean by 60-40 is, you know, let's put, you know, three to four uh, active, you know, prospecting channels in place and a couple passive uh, things in place with the mindset of eventually let's earn the right to no longer have to go out there and make 100 phone calls a day by putting all our other lead generation systems in place. So in the beginning as you started out and you want immediate business, what's more important is the prospecting channel. For long term, if you're planning on being in a business for the next three to five years, then what becomes very important, you know, in terms of putting systems in place are the lead generation system, the passive systems in place? So, so let's I, let's I described it correctly. No, that was good. That was good. I think I I, I don't want to lose anybody. So, let's let's we can talk about active or passive. Now, one thing that I you know, there's lots of when you think of passive, right? There's lots of things that will build help you build your brand or market or or help you uncover leads that are passive. You know, a couple of things would be, and I I know it's hokey, but you know what? If you wear your name tag. I know that's that's super. Nobody wants to do that. But if you wear your name tag and let's say it says Remax or Sotheby's or whatever, and you go to the grocery store, you know, uh, I'm probably more inclined. Frank and I talked about this our, our last month, right? I'm probably more inclined to say what's up to you if I know that you're in real estate, right? I can, it's and I'm standing in line at the grocery store. So you know, again, that's that's a passive way to to uncover leads. Another passive way is is uh, you know, as you're driving around, you know, having your on your car door it says. Frank Klesitz, Chatty Bazzi, I kill it in real estate, right? I can get you a hundred million dollars for your for your crappy house. So those those are passive things. But let's let's do this, Chatty. In my audience, I have it's you know oh, look, you're a guy who listens to my show, and it's crazy. I, my audience is so stratified. I have both brand new agents 
uh, people just getting their license, and then I have people who have you know a thousand agents underneath them. So, for the new people, or for people who are aspiring, let's talk about free to pay, right? We really want to, you know, I get a lot of people there. They're like, hey, I have drive, I have, I have the go, but I don't have the cash. So let's talk about some of the free lead gen channels, you know, free ways to get deals. Now you mentioned early when you started, you said, hey, let's make some cash in seven days. So, yeah. so maybe let's let's talk about free. Let's talk about uh, that being delivered in the next seven days. Good. So what what I did is I I I broke it down into four categories here. And I broke it down into uh, free offline, free online, paid offline, and paid online. So that way we don't leave you know anyone out, and you know we get to cover anything and everything, uh, you know, for the hopes of somebody to take action on these and get business. So I'll begin with the free offline. Okay, so if somebody wants to get a transaction sometime in the next seven days, and one of the things that you know we put as we were promoting this live event is the low hanging fruit, the low hanging fruit. That's what we need to go after. So if I was brand new in the business and or just, you know, that doesn't matter how long I've been in the business, if I am needing a transaction sometime in the next seven days or so, what would I do that doesn't require any money? Well, number one, the first thing that I would do is I would call unexpired. That's the first thing that I would do, Toby, is call unexpired. These are people who have already identified themselves as people that want to do business. They want to sell their home, and for whatever odd reason, their home didn't sell. We're not going to blame it on anyone right now. It could have been uh, you know, price. It could have been agent. It doesn't matter what the reason is. The most important thing to really take a look at is that is a person out there in our community right now who is a low-hanging fruit who needs my services. And he doesn't know about my specific services unless I either go knock on their door or go ahead and give them a call. So that's where I would begin, is by calling on expireds. Do you want me to expand on that, or we just no, 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 no. I, I, call on expireds? I would say this. I would say I would agree with you. I would agree out of all those channels that even I wrote down, expireds is where it would start, right? Because they have an asset, they have a house, they want to sell it. Now there might be some issues. They they want too much money, and there's always those kinds of issues. And so. So let's talk about, so I, I, and I don't know what Frank would say about this, but I certainly agree that if, if you want to make cash, go after expires. Now, you can, and you can find expires for free. You can also use a service like Red X or Land Voice Data, and those are fantastic services. Well, I can speak for Land Voice. I, I, I'm a big supporter of those guys. So um, I've identified five expires. We know, right, Nars put out a stat, and it is 87% of people will hire the first agent they meet. Now there's an expired. They they had it listed with someone and it didn't it didn't work. So they might be a little bit bummed out on agents. What's going to happen is once the the day that their pro, their their house or property expires, they're going to start to get phone calls. 7 a.m. in the morning, right? By 9 a.m. they have already gotten 15 calls and they're they're angry with with agents in general. So give us a strategy. Should we be the dude who calls them at at 6:45? And and risk the you know risk them getting angry with us, or should we get in the car and drive over there with a with a warm apple pie, or should we do a combination of call and then drive over there? I I I always encourage a combination of both, and and the reason being is the drive over. First of all, somebody might not be there, and if you're driving to two, three, four, five houses, uh, if you're in a place where you know there's a lot of traffic, it's not the highest and best use of your time. So I always say begin by calling all the new expireds early on in the morning, like literally 8 a.m. I'm not going to say 7 a.m. I don't want to get into any legal stuff here. But let's say 8 a.m., begin to make your calls, and immediately after you're done making your calls, go out there and door knock on a few of those. Specifically, which ones should you door knock on? Specifically, I would begin by who are the expires that you actually had a conversation with on the phone that you know that if you're able to get face-to-face, belly-to-belly with them, you can convert them, but you just couldn't convert them over the phone. I would go straight to these people's door. I love it. I, I would do. I, I would too. Okay, so so free offline, the second, the second, can I just add, 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 I want to add one more thing here because there's somebody <sighs> saying, look, there's a lot of people listening to this out there and they're saying, okay, well, I already knew that. Okay, but, but you already know it, but you're not doing it. So there's a valid reason why most people aren't doing it, and it's because there is some form of doubt in their mind. They're questioning either their sales ability or can they really provide that service. So if I were to give every single person out there a homework assignment right now, it would be the following. And the homework is to answer this question. 
And the question is, what are the three to five? What are the three, three to five most important reasons why a seller should work with me? What are the three to five most important reasons why a seller should work with me? See, when somebody answers that question, they begin to sell themselves on uh, you, you know, the reasons why. And until you sell yourself on the reasons why someone should work with you, it's going to be very difficult for you to sell someone else. Therefore, you're not going to take that action because you don't have the cojones to back it up. Got it. I love it. I love it. So, so listen, so, so let's, uh, on this number one, I almost, moved, I'm glad he's done because I was going to move to, to free offline number two. But so, so here's what I would say. So if you are going to do this, I, 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 I take Shadi's advice and my, I'm, I'm agreeing with that. Go after expireds, right? Figure out, you know, again, you need to believe that you have a cure for cancer. You need to believe that those people should work with you because you're going to get them 10% more. You're going to get it sold in 30 days or less or whatever it is. So, so, but you may not be able to convince them, even though you believe it, right? You, you've done Shadi's homework. You may not believe that, that you are the right person for the job, right? Somewhere deep down inside. Now here, so that's okay. So if you don't believe it, you're not going to be able to convince them. Here's, here's the next step, I think, in order to, to and this, this gets into customer development, to work them down the funnel is this. So, so you've called them. You've stopped their house, right? Hopefully you've talked to them. Maybe, maybe they weren't there, um, and both, uh, both on the phone and in person. The next step that I would do, Shadi, is I would send them something in the mail. Now, I, I'm not, I wouldn't just send them a one sheet. I, I think of things in campaigns. So, so I would think of a, a four-letter campaign of, of why they should work with you, right? So letter one might be, uh, um, you know, why you're so great, right? Why you're so awesome. You know, number two is how you can get it sold in 30 days. Uh, number th the third letter could be, you know, uh, how your plan for getting them 10% more than, than it was even listed for, something crazy. I don't know. I don't know what it is. You have to come up with your four, but I would say institute, right? The, you, you call them, you've been to their house. The next thing you should do to try to win that business, because that is there, that's, that's cash sitting there, right? You just have to convince them, yeah. is, is think of a, of a campaign and start mailers with those people. Okay, Toby, let me give them that campaign real quickly. Any, anyone can do this by just answering this question. And, and the question really is, you know, what are the, again, I like the numbers three to five. What are the three to five most important things that <coughs> a seller wants when it comes down to selling their home? What are the three to five most important things that a seller wants when it comes to selling their house? So if that's well, obviously, I mean, I can give you a couple real quickly. They want the most amount of money possible. They want a very fast sale, you know, and they want, you know, a, a transaction with ease. And number four, they don't want to make any mistakes. Well, there's four pieces of your campaign right there. And then you come up with the fifth, and that's your campaign right there. I love it. I love it. Okay, so so step one, free offline, go after expireds. Follow what what Shadi and I talked about. Okay, so here's what I would say was number two: free offline is, and this this is this is a channel that should that is a must for everybody, and it's it's your sphere, right? Your sphere of influence. How do you build that sphere? How do you go back? You know, so you have to build. You know, I did an episode a while back, and it was called "Your Net Worth Is Your Network," and that's so true, right? The people that you know, the people you associate with, that is going to be your net worth. So. Uh, create your database. You know, I, and I, well, here's what I say, Shadi, is I say go back, you know, go through your high school yearbook, all those people you should connect with on Facebook, uh, connect on LinkedIn, think of every job you've ever had, you know, try to come up with a list of, of everybody you worked with and get them in one database. And, and then, you know, that is your sphere. Now, now, a lot of people say, well, geez, Toby, I only know 30 people. And that's totally wrong. You don't know only 30 people. Right? Only, I only have 100 people. I mean, I hear this all the time. Let's say that's true. I know for a fact that's not true, but let's say that is true. When it comes to your influence, let's say that you only knew 10 people, but those people knew 10 people, right? So now you have influence. You have the ability to influence or, or touch 100 people. So again, free offline. Step two for me, Shadi, is create that database and start going and contacting that sphere. And the way to do that, again, the, the next step is start the A's and, and commit to 10 phone calls a day, 30 phone calls a day, until you get through it. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree with you. And, uh, <coughs> you know, I, I mean, that is definitely one of the first things that I work on with my coaching clients as well, too, because here's what's going to happen. Uh, you, you know, whether you're working expires, whether you're working for sale by owners online, offline, you're always going to be generating leads, and those leads should go somewhere, and they should go inside of your database. 
So I always say we need to, you know, clean the clutter, you know, clean our database, put everything in one organized place and really systemize it. I, I saw a video on the Get Viral website that really took it down very good. So people should definitely check that out. Frank, might be a good idea for you to put the link uh, for people how to put that together. Yeah, how to build a, uh, how to build an email list. Yeah. If you go to our YouTube channel, I made a really good video on how to go out and actually building a list. Yeah. And we got a new one coming out on how to segment it correctly. Yeah. You know, when it comes to database marketing, that's my game. Yep. That, 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 I mean, that, that is, you know, when, when you think about it, you know, that, that's how I want everyone to start thinking about right now is their database marketing. I mean, you know, nowadays when you go to, for example, like a Macy's, you know, they ask you, do you want, you know, a paper receipt or an email receipt or both? Why is that? So they can build that database so they can continue to market to you over and over and over. Same thing with the supermarket, same thing with everyone. So I need to think of your business like a business and really put that database together. Really, I mean, your, they say that your, your business is only as good as your database. That's it. Your business is only as good as your database. The better your database is, the better your business is going to be. I was at Lowe's. I want to add this in. I was at Lowe's maybe a year or two ago. It was a while back. And um, they asked me, would you like a $10 credit on your bill for a verified email address? Like $10? Yeah. I'm like, that's awesome. So like, yeah, it's, you know, we'll send you an email. I want you to confirm it. Like you gave me like a, a legitimate one. Yeah. I sent you a $10 credit. Isn't that, incre isn't that incredible? Yeah. I mean, yeah. think about that for how I'm sure they know how much how valuable that contact information is to stay in touch. Yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. So, 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 so Toby, right. one one more thing about the 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 past clients and and the um, centers of influence. Okay, so everyone, all I'm gonna say, you know, because there's a lot of people that are hung up. Which uh, CRM should I get? Which database should I get? And all I'm gonna say is, look, they all work. Yeah, some come with the bells and the, the whistle. One, the one that you use. Bingo. That's what I was going to say. Thank you for okay. finishing that up for me, Frank. Oh, is it? I'm sorry. That's one is the one that you're going to use. Seriously, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. I don't care if it's an Outlook. I don't care if it's a Realty Juggler or whichever one it is. Just pick one and use it, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and I wanted to say something to you, Frank. So so for a verified email address, they gave you 10 bucks, And what they and you said, I'm sure they know how they would. Here's the deal. All right? I did, again, I did an episode on the lifetime value. This is very much an internet, I'm sure you know, Frank, it's very much an internet marketing thing, right? Lifetime value of that customer. And, you know, and, I, and for everybody, if, you know, when, when, if they're doing this expires and they're like, you know what, I call. I call that guy. I'm not going to drive all the way over there. It's going to take me 30 minutes, 30 minutes to get back. It's going to cost me five bucks, eight bucks to get, whatever, all those people complaining. If you think about the lifetime value of that customer, if you can get them as a customer, you're going to make two to 15 grand on the sale. But, but, over the, if you can do the right customer development for that customer, how many other deals can you get from them? I had somebody on the show who, who, who tracked that, and uh, she sold multi-million dollar houses. She sold one, and that person, right, she, again, cultivated that relationship. That person was responsible for another 23 deals, and we did the math, and the value to her in her pocket was $6.9 million. So for that person who thinks like it's too expensive or loads, hey, I'm not going to give this guy 10 bucks. If you think about right, the lifetime value of that customer, what it could be, incredible. So <clears throat> anyhow, okay. So number two is your database. And Frank, I, do you want to say anything about how to build your your database? Or do you have I, the, the only thing I can give everyone is is, is the plan <clears throat> that we've we've taught for five years since we started the firm is this three step system is number one, you got to go out every day and meet people and talk to people and ask for their email address. I mean, everyone's prospecting, you're talking to people. You just got to have that mindset where at the end of every conversation, I'm going to ask for an email address to stay in touch. Where it's like, hey, I publish videos or send emails out on what's happening here in the real estate market. What's your best email address? I want to make sure you receive these important updates. <coughs> Get the email, right? Step so number two is you have to set aside some time every month to actually come up with something useful, some useful content every month to nurture that list. And... Uh, what we recommend is just a answering two commonly asked questions from your customers. You know, so hey, I was out with a buyer this week, and they asked me about how do I deal with a multiple off offer situation, and I want to share with you the answer that I gave them. And you send it out, Facebook, email, whatever it is. And then really, the beauty of it, so you build emails, you get email addresses, you send out your educational content every month uh, for your long-term nurture program, and then you can prioritize your phone call follow-up. This is really cool. You can track actually who the people are in your database that are actually consuming your content. So you can prioritize your phone call follow-up like when you're prospecting your database. Instead of just randomly calling all of them, right, you can figure out, okay, these 50 or 60 people watch my video or, you know, engage with my real estate content. 
maybe I'll prioritize my follow up with them for referral to see if they may be interested in buying or selling a home versus just calling through the whole list. And that's honestly the best plan. Get emails, make videos, and then calling prospects by prioritizing your phone call follow up with the people watching the stuff. Yeah, I love it. And by the way, I mean, this is a little bit off topic, but you know, for the for in, in the internet world, right? If you have a ten thousand person email list, that is good for a hundred thousand dollars a year. You can make a hundred thousand dollars a year forever off that ten thousand person email list. So go out and get emails. Okay. Um, so Shadi, so uh, so that was free offline uh, expired sphere. Do you have another one, or do you want to move to the online stuff, and then we can migrate to the paid? Oh, I, th I thought, well, th there's one that we, we should not overlook and, you know, because we're, we're mostly focused right here on the seller side, but we shouldn't, you know, the quickest way to have a paycheck right now would be through a buyer. Uh, and what, what I would do for a free offline would be open houses. Now, the yeah. key is to do the open house correctly. You know, I got a guy that I work with that's closing, you know, approximately three transactions every single month just from open houses. Is he getting lucky? Absolutely not. He's got a system in place that he's following the system. Now, one thing I want most people to get out of their head when they think of an open house is they think only buyers. Well, 50% of the business that he's getting from open houses happens to be sellers as well, too. So you can pick up buyers and sellers from open houses. You just you just can't you just can't say I'm gonna hold an open house Sunday from one to four and put a couple of signs out there and wait for people to show up. You gotta actively go out there and market that open house. And you can do that through Craigslist, Facebook, you know, free online stuff. You can door knock a couple of doors, you can pass out flyers, etc. Just do something to bring people in the door. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, you should you should if you're gonna do that, you should one hundred percent knock it. Uh, two, right, don't hold it open for two hours, dude. Hold, uh, hold it open for four hours, and, and really, a, a lot of people. I had this. A couple guys come on the show. I've I've held these back a little bit. Uh, they're making tons of money off these mega open houses, right? And maybe not everybody can do that. High, get balloons and a caterer and all that stuff. Uh, but if you're creative, you can. But they hold these mega open houses, and they do it at night. They do it from like six thirty to nine thirty, and, uh, and they're they're killing it. Here's here's what here's one thing I tell some of my people that I work with, Shadi, about open houses is, it's great to do open houses. You shouldn't do them just randomly. Here's, here's the process that I say. I say, number one, uh, if, in your farm or in, your, in, your, in an area you like, whatever, go through the MLS and, and look for a, a recent listing, so hope, something very, very fresh. Look for the best deal. Right? You determine what you think the best deal in that market is, and that's the one that you want to hold an open house, and that's the one that you want to market to because if it is truly a best deal and you know in your heart that that thing's not going to last in the market more than five days, and, there's, and again, there's lots of markets and lots of houses like that, that's the one where you can generate a contract at that open house. So go out, find the best one, reach out to the listing agent, and, and, and get, let, have you hold that open house and market the crap out of it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, I don't know if I'm recording it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so so let's go to um, and we're kind of Frank. How how are we on time, real quick? About halfway through. Gosh, man. Okay. Goes uh, fast, doesn't it? I, this could really be a two part one. Um, okay. So so um, yeah. Let's go to free online. I think we know all the free online, but let's let's talk about that really quickly. You know, earlier what I said was when, you, when in terms of building your database. Right, uh, go through your your uh, your old uh, school yearbooks. Right, connect with those people. I mean, utilize Facebook and uh, utilizing Facebook correctly is a whole. That's a whole another show. I don't want to get into it, but utilize Facebook and utilize LinkedIn a lot. That is super underutilized because I will tell you, if you, you know, it's it's super important for everybody that's listening to this right now. You really need to have. 500 plus, once you get 500 plus LinkedIn connections, that's all it says, 500 plus. It could be 10,000, but nobody knows. It just says 500 plus. So why it's important to get 500 plus people on LinkedIn linked to you is because it's social proof. When you go to a listing presentation and you tell them, hey, listen, I'm going to sell your house for 10% more than that guy. And the reason why is I have this you know, big network, blah, blah, blah. And then you tell me that. And then I look you up on LinkedIn and you have like, 32 connections or like 180. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to think you're not a connected guy. I'm going to think that what you just told me is a total crap. So free online is uh, so from you know so Facebook for Gen Xers and, and and Boomers. That's who's utilizing it. I mean, guys like me and Shadi are on it because we're we're professional. We have to. But millennials are not on there. They, you know, I mean, they've migrated away. They're on Instagram. And now, how can you use Instagram? That's free. You know, can you get followers? Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're a gorgeous young lady, 
put your picture up there and you're going to have, you know, 30,000 followers in, in two weeks. But, you know, you can, there's lots of things you can do with, with Pinterest. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. P oh, Pinterest or Instagram, right? Maybe you are the downtown condo expert in San Diego or you sell beachfront houses in San Diego, whatever it is. You know, you can go and take, you know, inspiring balcony shots, right? Or inspiring whatever. And that's like your bit, right? That's your deal. So you can use uh, 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 Instagram and Pinterest to your benefit, to create a following, to get that social proof. The problem, and I, I know I'm moving along too many things here, Shadi, so I want you to jump in in a minute, but um, the problem is when it comes to marketing, whether it's mailers or Instagram, too many people try it for a week, two weeks, a month, two months, and they're like, oh, yeah, it doesn't work, right? Wrong. Like you really have to say, it, it, whatever channel it is, you know, it takes time to build that audience. It's my show, right? You know, we've been at this. I'm not monetized at all. I'm going to start. But I've been at this for eight months and slowly building audience, slowly building my raving fan base. You know, I'm slowly building. I have 6,300 Twitter followers. Those people listen to what I have to say because hopefully I give them value. So anyhow, so Shadi, what, uh, talk to us about, about online, free online, what people should do. Okay, so you, you, you said the magic word just like 20 <laughs> seconds ago, and you said value. Value is, is the key word when it comes down to anything that you do online and offline. And you got to position yourself as a person who is constantly delivering value because when you deliver value, guess what? They keep on coming. The 6,300 people that you got that follow you on Twitter, why are they following you? It's because you give value. You, you know, you, you see where I'm going with this? So for me, if I were, if I were, to, if I were to choose one channel for, for free offline marketing, I'm going to double it up and I'm going to combine two and one right now, okay? I'm going to say Facebook and YouTube. Mm. Facebook and YouTube. Okay, because we're in the world of video marketing right now. Okay, so Frank, you're definitely in the right place, <laughs> running the right kind of business. So cool. video, That's good. Video, yeah, for sure. Uh, video is, is definitely, definitely, definitely key. And when you combine video and, you know, graphics on Facebook, that's when people really begin to pay attention. Because think of it yourself when you're going through the news feed. What are you looking for? You're not looking to read all those little one-liners. You're looking for the image that's going to grab your attention or for the video that's automatically going to play. And when a video automatically plays in a news feed, guess what? You stop to see what the heck that video is all about. So that's how you grab the attention. So I'm going to say Facebook. But Facebook, Facebook is definitely a whole entire show by itself. That's like one, a, a one to two hour show to really put the whole entire system in place. So I would begin by saying get your database Get your database in your Facebook, okay? And some people are like, well, I don't want people to see my private this and private that. Well, you can segment that. You know, you can create certain lists and decide who sees what and when they see it. And then what you want to do is you want to be posting every single day a minimum of three times. Three times, I'd say post one in the a.m. hours, once again in the early afternoon, and once again in the evening because different people um, attend the, uh, Facebook at, at different times. And each time you post, make sure you're posting something of value. Yeah, and, and look. So for those people who say, "Yeah, I, I, I want to be private or whatever," I mean, I mean. So here's the. Uh, uh, someone's outside with a lawnmower. Uh, uh, so, so listen. So here's here's the deal. So th just really quickly. So you should have, if you know, if you're worried about personal or whatever, you should have a personal page and you should have a business page, and you should post different things to those. It's, here's the magic. You know, everybody's heard the eighty twenty rule. And it's very much 80-20. On your personal page, it should be 80% personal, 20% business. Uh, and then on your business page, it should be flipped the other way. 80% business, 20% personal. Uh, uh, you know, 80-20. You know. So the deal is, I see it way too many times. I see people on Facebook that, that I follow or, or, or are friends with or whatever, and all they do is post, like, open house, new listing. I'm like, you know, it's... If you don't, people hate real estate agents and car salesmen because they think it's smarmy. It's not. I mean, it's a business that you can, both of us, you can make a lot of money, yeah. but that's smarmy, man. Don't, don't, don't spam me with your open house in, you know, Poughkeepsie, New York. I don't want to see it. Yeah, I agree. The, the, the key term here is, you know, what value are you, are you bringing? I, lo I love the 80-20 rule, uh, and you should always be, you know, going out of your way to deliver value. And remember, the value could be from a third party, okay? It doesn't have to be something like, you know, for example, you read an article that you know it's beneficial to your audience, you know, so what if it's from the OC Register or LA Times or, you know, whatever magazine or uh, online resource, share it, okay? Because then they begin to also see you as a resource, 
so so real quick. So um, is is uh, is the asking questions button on, Frank? Just nobody has any questions. Uh, no questions yet. We just got to come in from Jesse saying, uh, you know, you just got to actually make your phone calls to the database, which I appreciate. Um, but no questions here. If anyone has any questions about lead generation, feel free to type them into the Q&A box, and we'll get them answered here for you, which yeah, I'm great. Maybe, maybe we're a little bit all over the map, you know. <laughs> but so, um, uh, so yeah, lead gen and then prospecting and then customer de development. So so we have for, for free online, we have obviously the Facebook stuff. Uh, here, here's something in terms of online that a lot I see a lot of agents getting wrong, right? Real estate agents, and and again, this this stuff applies to everybody. Is number one, there's any place that you can fill out a free po profile, you should fill it out. Um, so so on YouTube, right? Should I talk about YouTube? You should have a YouTube channel. Hopefully, you post some stuff there. But if you don't, you know, even if you don't post a huge amount, you should have a YouTube channel. There's about.me. I don't know if anybody knows that, but about.me is a little place where you can fill in your personal profile. It's totally free, and uh, um, it just makes you searchable. Um, you know, Zillow. If you can do a free, wherever you can do a free profile, go put a free profile out there. And the other thing that is, uh, again, YouTube is super important. Video is super important. Google ranks video higher than they do content, right? And people, it's it's more engaging. G plus Google plus is is Google's social platform, and it is crazy the the ranking juice that you can get on Google plus. Um, I've been I've been playing with it, and you know I, like I've been playing with like real estate little, little coach. Shout out, you should do this, man. You can you can put content in there in Google plus, and literally it goes it'll go like like Mike Ferry, Brian Buffini. Uh, and, and who, who, uh, my last guest, Greg McDaniel, he did this, and it goes like Mike Ferry, Brian Buffini, Greg McDaniel's from Google Plus post. I'm like, oh, whoa. So, you know, how can you gain that? How can you use that? It's new, and, you know, you should be using it. So I think those are the three things that, that are out there that, uh, that are pe people are underutilizing. Okay. I, I agree. You definitely need to uh, protect your name brand, etc., and you should own every single domain or online property that you could with your name. And I think that lawnmower is coming from my end, so I'm going to move to another room in the house. So, go ahead. Okay. okay. That's happened to me before. That's not a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Um, we got a question here. Is there a value in door knocking to your farming area? Also, should I hand out something of value in door knocking? So, so the, okay, yeah. So. Thanks, Heidi. Uh, so is there, t ask me that first, but is, of course there is, but ask me that specifically again. Is there a value, is there in, door value in door knocking to your farming era, area? And I would think so. But probably more of the question is if she's going to door knock, you know, what should she give as an item of value in door knocking? How do you go about doing door knocking correctly? Right. So, so if you have a farm, and everybody should have a farm. Now, there's different ways of farming. Shut, I'm sure can talk a, a lot about this. But number one, your goal for your farm, your goal is you want to be the mayor of that farm, right? You want to be the mayor. You want to be the person that 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 the in the community sort of revolves around. So what can you do? Now, here's what I suggest. Here's there's lots of things you can do. But if you're just new, first it's all about scripting. So you know you should knock on the door and say, Hey, my name's Patty. I think her name was Patty. My name's Patty. I just took over this area. I'm with Sotheby's Real Estate, and I'm just going around. And meeting all the neighbors, you can just do that, and, and then and then you can say, hey, listen, you know what? If I'm here, if you, I don't know if you have anybody you can rely on with, with questions about real estate, but if you don't, I'd love to be that person. Here's my card. Can I get your email and put you on our newsletter? And I'm 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 keeping track of all the events or whatever. You can figure something out. So if you and I suggest having starting out with an 800 to 1200 house farm, and that number is important because. If you are committed, and you need to be, if you you got to be committed to success. You got to be able to bet on yourself. It, let's say you have an 800-person farm. I'm sorry, house farm. In in a span of of simply going knocking on 30 doors a day, everybody can do that. If you do the math, um, you literally can get through that farm in less than 30 days, right? You can touch every single door there, and and ideally, right? You can you you have a door hanger. You leave something there, right? So first, the 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 value thing is. You're offering your service for free. I'd love to be the person that you can rely on if you have questions about real estate. Number one, number two, right? You finish it up, and and at day thirty-one, you're back at door number one. And maybe that next month, what you do is you organize 
uh, a neighborhood block sale, right? I mean, everybody everybody loves yard sales, and you, you organize this massive uh, um, block sale, and you go around and say, "Hey, I'm Patty. I was here a couple of weeks ago, and uh, you know, we're all, I'm talking with the neighbors, and, and everybody's a lot of people expressed interest in in doing a giant yard sale. Would you like to participate? Here's my here's my thing. Call me. We'll put you on the map, and then then you get people, and then and then what you do, right? You're giving value. All the people that say that they want to uh, uh, do it or participate, you know, you create a map. You can literally put a map and say, "This is Mr. Smith. He's got a bunch of construction equipment." And then stop two is Mr. Mr. Jones, and he's got he's got a lawnmower for sale that that Shaddy you know didn't like. Whatever. And so yes, door knock, tons of value. And if you're deliberate, I know I'm rambling on here, but if you're deliberate, if you have in your mind, hey. I want to find somebody who wants to list their house in the next three weeks, two weeks, seven days, whatever it is, and and you have your radar out for that, and you motor those doors, you will find that, the, right? I don't want to get into no, the, the universal deliver. You will manifest it. So yes. Yeah, okay. I, uh, you, you know, um, Toby, I, I have clients that are that are closing a good one to two transactions every single month just from door knocking, and the key is consistency. That's the key. Absolutely. You can't just go out there and, and door knock randomly. I mean, you could every once in a while, you will hit the jackpot. But when you're consistent, you're doing it consistently, and you're thinking of it as one of your six channels for lead generation, and you're <coughs> consistently giving value uh, to that community, that farm of yours, you will definitely get business from it. Now, one one thing I would add to that is to go above and beyond just building the email list here. And what I would encourage every single person to do for their farm and or door knocking is build a private Facebook group for that community. Mm -hmm. And you can check, anyone can check this out. They can uh, look for a group called Anaheim Hills Buzz. That's where I live, Anaheim Hills Buzz. I helped one of my coaching clients put that together and it began by her door knocking and bringing people on board. Well, for me to know anything that's going on in my community, all I got to do is go to Anaheim Hills Buzz and, and Facebook, and I know you know what accident happened, anything and everything, and we already have over 8,000 people from their farm in just one group. Do you think that's going to give her an advantage over knowing who's going to buy, who's going to sell, and what's happening? You're absolutely right. So that would be the big tip in regards to door knocking. Get them in a private Facebook group. I love that, dude. That's the first time I've heard that. I love that. Um, yeah, and, then, and, and again, Probably think that I love the group, but also you know you want to be the community organizer, right? So maybe you maybe there's a school in your farm, right? Maybe you can uh, help with fundraising for the school, right? You, you know it just gives you so, or maybe you you're uh, the the school's doing a blood drive, or maybe you know you help organize at the school, uh, you know CPR training, or or you know we, we're getting out of summer, but maybe you know prior to summer, you know you, you uh, provide some um, water safety tips because everybody's gonna be swimming in the summertime. So anyhow, <coughs> that's 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 a super duper one. And if you haven't, if you're new to my show, go back, look for a guy named Thatch Nguyen. Thatch did yeah, a hundred doors a day for ten years. By year three, the dude was making a million bucks a year, and he owned like seventeen houses. And and now, I mean, he doesn't do it anymore. But the guy owns apartment complexes. He's rolling around in a fleet of Bentleys. And 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 he was a Vietnam immigrant, could barely speak English, but he was committed and consistent. A hundred doors a day for 10 years and you know and that's it so uh, I agree with you consistency um, uh, what next Shadi? I mean I, I don't I have know. a question what kind of leaflets this is this Sam from in the UK what kind of leaflets or flyers would you find work the best that get the initial response from a cold address so I assume maybe it's a you're leaving something on the door when you're door knocking or maybe you're mailing a cold address what would you send them to get the best response that's a good one, uh, and I'm, I, I want to know your your thoughts on this, Shadi. But I mean, that's that, there's not a super good. It, it's you know, listen, all marketing, all marketing is interruption based marketing, right? So if you mail somebody something, you know, and you're going through your mail, right? You go through your mail, and and it's m mail that I need, or some my DMV registration, junk mail, right? That's that's I just was interrupted by an ad. So if you're going to mail some something to someone, it's going to be pretty tough to, to get them to, it's like oh, getting your emails open, right? You need to have a great uh, subject line. So so if you're going to mail them something, it's, it's I would say with either leaving something on the door or mailing something, the most important thing that it is personalized, that they see it, it's like it's handwritten, like that's the stuff that I open. So, so you know, if you're going to leave something, here's, here's, here's what I would say, right? If you're going to leave something on the door, 
You can literally leave, you know, kind of like a door hanger that says, hey, I'm Shadow Dazzy, I was just here. But personalize and say, man, what a fantastic front door. What a beautiful garden. I love your mailbox. Where did you get it? That's Try to engage them that way. You know, and even if they don't call you and tell you where they got the mailbox, they're going to go, hey, that, that shaddy guy's a pretty nice guy. He, he, he likes my taste in doors or mailboxes or gardens. Okay, well, what, what I would do if I'm going to do any direct, any kind of direct mail, <laughs> you know, it, it would be definitely it, I wouldn't be about the letters. Uh, like we said, marketing is an inter interruption. You know, we're interrupting somebody. For example, the marketing that, you know, if we're going to leave something at a door and or mail something, what I recommend is a postcard. Postcard. The reason being is when we get a letter, et cetera, a lot of times we know if the letter should go in a trash can or not. Well, the majority of the postcards are going to go in a trash can as well too, but then again, we've already delivered the marketing message because they saw the name, they saw the brand. Now, how to grab their attention? I think one of the biggest concerns for any homeowner, obviously if, if you're sending something to a door, it's for a homeowner, is the value of their home. Are we in a declining market or are we in an appreciating market? Now, if I got something in my door and it says, your property value just went up, boom, you got my attention, okay? Or if, if it says, property value are declining, here's what you can do about it. You just got my attention. So the big headline is the most important thing in, in the positioning of any marketing piece. Yeah, I agree. I'll tell you, so I, it's, I'm, I'm glad you brought that postcard thing up because um, – I don't open my mail. I mean, it's so funny. If you, I just had my daughter in here, and I had stacks of mail that went back from February. I don't open my mail mainly because all my stuff is auto paid, and and I and it's just uh, you know I whatever. I don't open my mail, but I will sometimes look through it to see what I should throw away and what I should throw in the pile to file. And uh, recently, I just had somebody send me a postcard, big beautiful picture of a house that I knew was like from a few streets away. So. And, I, and here's what I did. I was like, oh, crap, that is from, I think it was that street. I flipped it over and saw the guy, and, I, and it, did, it really didn't say anything. I just knew, you know, it, 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 he caught my attention, and I ended up calling the guy. And I ended up talking with him for like 20 minutes. I wanted, to say, I wanted to find out all the stats, right? How long was it on the market? How much did they get for it? What else does he see coming? So I 100% agree, send a postcard. But if you're going to do that, send it, send something it, you know, if you're going to talk about houses, send something where they look at it and they're like, this is, again, personalized. This is from my neighborhood. Yeah. Okay, so um, I, I don't know. I really don't. I mean, there's so much to lead generation. I don't know that if we can I, can I Can I say something? Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> we, we can talk about lead generation for a very long time. I mean, this could literally turn into a week course, Okay. And if, if I were to insert any point that would be of, of much value here would be for those of you who are not taking your lead generation very seriously, there's an underlying psychological something that is going on that is preventing you from taking it very seriously. And whenever we survey someone in or in, in the 20,000 plus one-on-one -on -one coaching calls that I've done, it always boils down to one thing and one thing only. And it is the lack of confidence. It's the lack of confidence. All I know is if you have more confidence and you have a better attitude, you would become naturally more courageous to go out there and do all the things that we are telling you to do to generate leads. So, yes, you got to put the lead generation systems in place, and at the same time, you got to work on developing your skill sets each and every single day. Because what's going to happen is even if you put your lead generation systems in place, whether it's online or offline, paid or not paid, the leads are going to come to you. And some of those leads are also going to be going to your competitors. Like sometimes you have a lead, but you're not the only person that has that lead. One of your competitors has that lead as well too. So he or she that has the better skill set is the one that's going to convert the lead. But hold on. So I, I would agree with you. Um, but but skill set versus courage, right? So so you need the courage to go out. And, sorry, no. I gotta, I'm, I'm trying to focus on looking at my camera rather than looking at your picture down there. But no, uh, drag, drag your, uh, drag. So this is me looking down. Drag your window. Yeah. Take your window from down your screen and bring it up so the window's right at the webcam level. Oh, I'll mess it. I'm not sure. I, I tried that earlier. I still have this lower. Anyhow, whatever. So, so Shadi, what, what uh, skill set is something in, in terms of development skill set or developing courage? You know, you need both of those things. Your skill set, you know, if you have scripts, maybe all you need is courage. Um, but what should people focus on first? Should they develop their skill sets around 
uh, learning the scripts and then closing, or or developed a courage? Because I, and, and I, have, uh, I, I think when you develop your skills, a natural result of that will be courage. Got okay. it. So that's the thing. Now, if we were to say which skill is one of the more important skills to learn here, I would say, I mean, if you if you listen to any models or follow my trainings, uh, I always say, you know, the the most important skill is is your language patterns. So, uh, what I'm going to say here is is a little bit differently for the sake of general terms, and I'm going to say that the most important skill that you need to develop right now is not the appointment setting skill. Some people are like not the appointment setting skill. Yeah, not the appointment setting skill. The most important skill that you need to develop right now is your presentation skill. Because when you develop your presentation skill, again, that will cause you to become more courageous in going out there to set the appointment. For example, I don't play basketball. I don't know how to play basketball. I'll probably double dribble like crazy. So if someone said, hey, do you want to play basketball? I'm going to say, no way. I'm not going to get in the course. So that would be like my way of avoiding that presentation of me playing basketball. But if I was very good at playing basketball and there's you know six people fighting to see which one is going to play, guess what? I'm going to fight my way to be on that court to play. Because that would be like my way of doing my presentation. Follow me? Yeah, I'm following you. So, so again, what again? Twenty thousand coaching calls, right? So, if, again, presentation. What is the thing where? Um, because you can, you know, again, you can get the lead. You can, you can prospect. You can develop that customer, all to get that appointment to 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 list it, right? And say list with me. What is the thing that in general people are failing at there? And what kind of closing rate should should people be looking for? They should be looking for a closing rate of over 80%, of over 80%, nothing less than that. You always got to take responsibility periodically. First of all, you should not, you know, qualify, and there's another conversation that we need to get into here, but we're not going to get into right here because that person needs to be qualified. That person should be ready, willing, and able to sign the contract. So you should be, number one, sitting in front of the right person. So once you have the right person, three things you need to take a look at. Number one, what do they want? What is their goal? What do they want? Number two, why do they want it? And then number three, show them how they can get it. And that's it. Yeah, let me, so show them. I, look, I love that. Let me tell you, here's my thought on that, Chatty, because, again, a lot, of, a lot of people that I coach have closing rates like that, and I tell them that that's wrong. If you have an 80% closing rate, what that means is you're not getting up to bad enough because you, you're not, you know, you're, you're just not getting enough. You know, you need to you need to have more lead, right? That's why the funnel, the lead gen thing, why we're talking about it is so important is because, you know, you need to have people that you sh I think you should have a closing rate of 30%. I think if you have a closing rate of 30 to 35% and, you ha and your skills are developed, that you're getting the right amount of, of people through your funnel. That could be another one-hour show, Toby. Got it. Okay. All right. I would there, say, there, Toby... Yeah. If, I can, if I can just leave with one thing for what it's worth after hearing the, the, the whole hangout, it's probably the one thing that probably gets someone to take away is just the number of contacts, the number of people you have to speak to every single day. And usually we, we, we go around, we look at all the different you know lead generation sources, but um, the people who are speaking to consistently, regardless of whoever they are, to say 20 or 30 people a day, whether it's through door knocking or phone calls, or maybe they have all the inbound leads coming in through the pay-per-click, but if you're making that number of contacts a day, I think it's almost impossible not to make a lot of money in real estate or any sales job for that matter. I totally agree. I, I want to, yeah, I mean, I, thank you, Frank, for boiling it down, right? You took this all, like, you know, filtered out and said, that, yeah, that is it, right? It's all about getting, meeting new people. So the, so the question then is, it goes back to that list I had is, you know, for you out there, you know, everybody wants to make more money. Everybody wants a bigger business. It's all about meeting more people. <laughs> What, where can you, what environments can you get yourself into to meet more people in a, in a, and, and, and get their name, email, phone number in an organic way? Right? Is that meetups? You know, is that joining a sports group? You know, Shadi doesn't play basketball, so he's not going to do that. Maybe you do. Maybe that's your passion. Um, you know, do you like to ride bikes? Right? Find a group of like-minded people. Because it, it, that, that's, you know, if you can be around people who enjoy similar things or are similar, um, organically, naturally, right, either very quickly or over time, you're going to get business out of them, whether it's them or, or it's their mom or their brother or their, you know, their next-door neighbor. That's great. Well, Toby, we're at time today, buddy. Let's go ahead and sum it up and let people know what to do next. Yeah, perfect. Well, look, um, for me, thanks, everybody, for showing up. Um, I hope you're getting value out of this. I think here's the deal. What, what uh, last time we talked about... Um, 
I don't know. Oh, taking massive action. This time we talked about Lee Jin, and I think we're a little bit all over the map because it's such a giant topic, and I think maybe uh, me and Shadi came on last minute. I had another guy, and he, we had a conflict. So thank you, Shadi, for coming on, and, and um, hopefully you got some value out of this. Here's the plan moving forward, right? We know, or hopefully you know, we're doing this every third Thursday of the month. Um, next hangout, I was going to talk about Facebook. Most people are underutilizing it. They're using it wrong, and uh, and so I want to talk about Facebook. And then the one, and if you get value out of that, the next one I wanted to do was that uh, we is um, talk about Facebook ads. They're cheap. They're easy to get likes. They're easy to get traction. Um, most people don't know how to use the power editor. Most people don't know how to buy ads, write copy. It's a giant topic. But so so let me know. Um, everybody you should have my email. It's Toby at superagentslive.com that goes right to my phone. So again, I will see your emails. I'll respond to it. Give me topics. Uh, let me know if I should keep doing this. Um, and if you haven't, go to the site, superagentslive.com. Subscribe on iTunes. Subscribe on Stitcher. It's all free paid content, and it is golden. Great. Shadi, wrap it up. Uh, you know, all, all I'm going to say is, uh, you know, thank you very much for, for having me on here. Uh, it was my pleasure. And uh, the bottom line, like Frank said, you know, just decide on how many people you want to speak to each and every single day. Be consistent with that. And through consistency, a couple of things are going to happen. One, you're going to get better. And number two is even by accident, you are going to get some business. Okay. Now, as far as additional trainings, etc., cetera, uh, you could always go to shaddybazzy.com. And there's a bunch of trainings out there. And, um, you know, I also have a podcast for those that want to listen to podcasts. And it's Real Estate Success Mastery TV. Great. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. you.